Okay, we're live on Facebook and we're recording. Okay, then can everybody stand for the pledge? I pledge, I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, everybody. Do we have any changes to the agenda? I do not believe there are any changes to the agenda. Okay, then I need a motion to approve the agenda. So move. Okay, need a second. Second. Brad. Motion by Sue, second by Brad. All in favor? Do we want to do our little thumbs up? Hi. Looks like we got, oh, I can only see. I'm okay. We're good. Seven. I'm good. All seven. Motion carried. Uh, <clears throat> next, we'll move on to our uh, recognitions and presentations. So we have our school safety and reopening. All right. Dr. Beeler, yeah. you're up. Wow. Thank you very much. Uh, so yesterday uh, marked our return back to hybrid instruction, <coughs> instruction at uh, all three of our buildings. We um, also saw athletic practices start yesterday for our winter high risk sports. So overall, it was great to see students and staff back on campus engaged in learning um, for those who elect to do so uh, for in-person learning. There have been some modifications um, at Seneca and the high school, particularly with how the hub um, and the location of the hub so that we could free up the gymnasium so that could be um, properly cleaned and available for the athletic contests, um, which actually turned out to be somewhat beneficial because our students now can be distributed into smaller um, areas, which uh, allows them to sort of be in a slightly more academic setting, I would say. Uh, over the next several weeks, we are looking to see how we can implement um, a plan that will allow more students who elect to come to campus, um, onto campus at all three of the buildings, but particularly at the high school. A lot of this is gonna be teacher driven because um, in all honesty, we've learned that teachers, um, when given the opportunity to have input into decisions such as um, what should the schedule look like for students and what's really the best um, logistical operations for getting students on the campus in the safest way possible. Um, that when they are in the driver's seat, we come up with a great plan and it usually works out very well. Um, we saw that particularly with eighth grade. Um, we've seen that with some of the, the seniors. So the teachers will be working with the building administrators to see what we can do to um, perhaps change some schedules, um, change locations and maximize the number of students that um, can be on campus if they elect to do so. But at this point in time, we are open for business. Um, it's great to see our students on campus and we thank the uh, teachers and staff members um, as well as the students and parents um, for their trust in the school and look forward to seeing them tomorrow. So um, Mark, can we just quickly go over, I know there was some concern about basketball. Um, practice at Prospect. Uh, and can we just reassure everybody that's listening what precautions we're taking to make sure that um, all the teachers at Prospect, uh, not just the teachers, but all the staff at Prospect are safe while we're conducting uh, practice over there? Sure. So um, I, I'm, as far as I'm aware, that concern was raised on Sunday um, and was raised prior to actually seeing the operation. I can tell you that since then I've talked with um, Mr. Bartosik, our assistant athletic director. He has taken um, the proactive approach with his coaches to ensure that they're not only meeting the safety expectations that we've put in place, um, but additional ones uh, as well. So 
Practice is a prospect, um, bring in at 3.30. Staff is typically dismissed um, well before that. Uh, and staff practice occurs in the gymnasium, um, which the staff and students at this point in time are not actually in the gymnasium at any point in time. So it's a completely separate location. The gymnasium is cleaned after the students um, leave and then and therefore before the um, staff and students arrive in the next morning. In addition to the coaches that we have supervising the students, uh, we are also placing an additional person, um, which will typically be a security officer, um, who will be there just primarily for logistics. They'll take the temperature of the students who come in. The students still have to be screened just like they would um, coming onto campus uh, either way or participating in an athletic contest. Um, and overall, uh, the commentary that we've had both from the coaches as well as from the athletic director that for the past, at least yesterday that I had feedback from went exceptionally well. The athletes were not only happy to be on campus, but exceptionally cooperative. Uh, Mark, one addition to that, um, uh, as the students enter, um, one of the building-based staff members, uh, the LPN in particular, um, has offered to stay and help check the kids in just in case a student did have a medical issue transitioning in. So as the students enter for that first uh, group of students, uh, they're going to flex their schedule a little bit. Um, and be there just in case. So that's a little added protection that uh, we worked out this afternoon uh, around three o'clock today. And you said it's a separate entrance too, correct? It's not yes. an that everybody else is using. Correct. Okay. Do any other board members have any questions? All right, then we'll move on to uh, our next presentation, which is grants from Dr. Beeler and Ms. Dudek. All right, terrific, thank you. Uh, let's see. <coughs> that and... Okay, uh, Mr. Breitstein, can we confirm that um, you can see a slide that says annual grant hearing with a uh, open book. All right, terrific. We got it. Um, so uh, both Mrs. Dudek and I will be presenting. Um, this is our annual grant hearing. Um, if there are questions as we go along, um, if it's something that you would like to type into the chat box, we can address that. Um, and then for our board members, we're happy to answer any questions. Um, and I'll be honest with you, you can probably just interrupt us as we're going along if uh, something comes up. So we're going to be reviewing Title I, um, both A and D, Title II, Title IV-A and V, um, which are all part of uh, the consolidated application. We also have the Title VI grant, 611, 619, um, the statewide universal pre-K, the pre-K full day, um, and then a brief overview, uh, including what's projected to be in all the grants dollar-wise, um, as well as where that money is going to be spent. Um, in addition to those grants, we're also going to be um, briefly discussing the school improvement grant, as well as the My Brother's Keeper um, Native American program grant. Mrs. Dudek, is there anything that um, I have missed or that you'd like to add? Not so far, thank you. All right. Would you like to take us through the um, process that we utilize to develop the budget? Sure. So each of the grants follow different cycles, and we'll kind of cover that a little bit in each of the upcoming slides, but they all follow the same process. So the grants are proposed and different points in the year. Um, some of those grants, including Title VI, start now, and those grants continue to be proposed from either state or federal levels all the way through the school year. Um, once it's reviewed, if we can qualify, we start writing those grants. Some are in stages um, with 10-day deadlines. Some are in stages with three-month deadlines. Um, the grants are then submitted, and we wait for that process to come back. We need to find out whether or not we've secured the money before we start to spend it. But with the help of Karen McGarra, we make sure that we have things covered in the meantime. And those expenditures are reviewed quarterly. Um, I do handle grant meetings for both the ESSA 
the 611, 619, the UPK, and the Title VI, and have um, different designees both within the district, including parents have been invited, including community members, teachers, staff members that are included on the grant, and administration where the grant impacts the buildings and programs. Um, so just to give an overview and really a quick summary of each of our grants, this page allows you to see very quickly what our totals are for each of the grants we currently have. So ESSA, even though it is one grant, Title 1A, 1D, 2A, 4A, and 5 all have different criteria and how the money that is found within that line can be spent. 611 and 619 can only be spent on students with disabilities. Universal Pre-K can only be spent on half-day classes, and we currently have a wonderful collaboration with Head Start and are hopeful to be able to have another collaboration with SALC in the future based on the New York State guidelines for that grant. Then we have the full-day UPK grant, and then our Title VI grant, and then I'll have Dr. Beeler talk about his My Brother's Keeper at the end. So Title IA, I'll start with that. This primarily focuses on reading and math, and our total grant is $489,000. As you can tell by the slide, it's used in a variety of ways. Okay, you shouldn't have said that. You uh... <laughs> One of the ways yeah. that I can keep uh, going. Uh, this... We can't see the screen. Nope. All right, let's see. We'll try that again. Uh... Actually, somebody seems to have taken over. And okay, then, uh, Levi, boot that Stan Williams. Uh, there we go. Can we see mine now? Is that better? Yes. Okay. All right, Mrs. Dudek. Can you go back one slide, please? I can, and I will rest assured everyone that was not my uh, slide. Sure, Stan. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Title IA um, actually covers quite a bit. Uh, again, the biggest piece that we have to remember with the ESSA grants is that certain components of the grants do have to be shared and facilitated with um, entities where our students go outside of the district. Oh. Okay. Oh. So back in the meeting. Mm hmm do we need a new restart? Let's see. I might advocate for that and then just have people watch if they can over social media who aren't on a school listserv, unfortunately. Yeah, the we have, um, is anyone that comes us? in is invited in and has to be admitted in. Well, somebody's hacked us, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, these are all names that are in here that we know. Um, there was a phone number and one other person's name I didn't recognize that isn't with us anymore. So um, it is up to... Well, if it, let's put it this way. If it happens again, then... Very so, good. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll give it a one more go. All right, Mrs. Dudek. Try once more. So we do uh, share some funding with Southern Tier Catholic for some students that do meet the requirement for frame reduced lunch that do uh, attend there. And this year, St. Mary's School for the Deaf was added to this grant as well as an organization that we will be sharing funds with. Um, they do have one student that qualifies. You'll see in each of the slides that are following that majority of the funds are going towards staffing, materials and supplies, including for Title IA for homeless youth, and then we always have our indirect cost line and that does vary year to year and it varies on the total cost of the grant and how the money is spent. Dr. B, can you go on to the next slide? Yep, we're working on it. There we go. Title 1D is actually something that we oversee for Zafron. It used to be included in Title 1A, but it is now strictly for the um, facility at Zafron and they currently have $15,454. Kim Powers has been a wonderful asset and is amazing to work with and how these funds are spent to benefit the students that are part of her program. The Title IIA um, actually is titled to increase student achievement through STEM and career readiness. 
Again, this total grant is $69,183. And this grant really aligns with our DCEP and how it can be utilized. This is where a lot of collaboration has to occur between myself and Dr. Baylor to make sure that the money is being spent appropriately based on the DSEP and based on some of the other guidelines set forth by the state between both of our offices. Um, this year, we did have a consortium with BOCES as well um, and continued with that 21st, uh, 21st century makerspace as part of that process. 4A is a little different. Um, it is a newer grant. And this grant, um, prior to COVID, really does specify how the funds are used. The $38,000 has to be used for well-rounded education, safe and healthy schools, and effective use of technology. And the state each year has specific parameters on how much can be spent in each of the categories, including for effective use of technology, how much can be spent on hardware. Um, this is something that is in collaboration that I work uh, diligently with, with um, Penny Beatty for our professional development, Marcy Brown for technology, Sue Schnaufer for implementation pieces, and Dr. Beeler to make sure that we have the additional supports um, through the different goals that have to be set through Title IV-A. And if anyone is interested in walking through this process when I start it again, I'm happy to have you as part of the process as we do this next summer. The last ESSA grant is the Title V, which is rural and low school, um, low income school. And again, this helps with bringing interventionists in and allows for those interventionists to work with our students within Salamanca. 611 is for our students with disabilities, grades uh, kindergarten through age 21. And again, this grant allows for certain flow through funds that have to go to the agencies that work with our preschoolers, such as St. Mary's, um, the Children's League, and BOCES. And our 619 is strategically for our preschool special education. And this is really to work with our students between the ages of three and five. Um, being a district that not only is a district that provides IEP services, but also an agency support, um, again, services from this grant also go to BOCES and the league. These are fun. Our half day UPK grant is where we have great collaborations with the community. Um, and through um, some of the quarterly meetings that we are currently holding, I'm hoping that everyone is seeing how these funds are utilized. The difference with some of these this year is that there's money, especially in the UPK half day grant that has to be set aside there is a specific target that has to be met as far as the number of preschool students that we service, and they have to fall into certain parameters within the grant. If we don't reach those parameters or numbers, and it is a very interesting formula how it is figured out, then some of the funds are taken back in the spring, or I should say they are not dispersed to us in the spring. So this is one of the grants that even though it is $380,628, we could at any given time give back between 60 and $120,000, depending on if we meet all of our quotas for students in UPK half day situations. Our full day grant um, is our one classroom that we currently have with Ms. Booth. Um, that classroom is $180,000 and that is a long-standing grant that they actually don't offer at this point as a new incumbent. Um, if you are applying for UPK grants, it is now under the half-day protocol. And for myself, last but not least, the Title VI um, is working with, in conjunction with the um, PAC, which is now the IPE committee and Michela to facilitate everything that goes into this with the help of the PAC. We talk about the different pieces that are needed to support our students um, through Native American funds. Currently, this is our support workers, our social workers. And again, this is where all of the different conferences and travel and supports for the students to explore the world, um, allow us to have them out and about and working with different people to explore and get them college bound and ready or work ready if that's where the appropriateness lies. All right, terrific, thank you very much. You're welcome. So um, under the Title I, we also are eligible for a school improvement grant. Um, that is a total dollar uh, value of $50,000. Um, and what we utilize those funds are for um, the implementation of the district comprehensive improvement plan. 
Um, currently, that uh, money is being spent on a contract with Rethink Ed and New EDU, um, both of which are assisting us with assessing the socio um, emotional levels of our students, um, as well as providing a curriculum um, to support their needs uh, around those areas. The last grant that we're going to talk about tonight, um, we actually just spoke about in January, which is the My Brother's Keeper. Um, this is the specifically the Native American program grant. My Brother's Keeper um, program as a whole has several different um, components. Uh, previously, we were eligible for the My Brother's Keeper Challenge Grant. Um, that was in a, a dollar amount in the 60s, uh, about $60,000. Um, last year, we became eligible for the My Brother's Keeper Native American Program Grant. Um, that is a three-year grant that provides $158,000 per year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the first year's funding has been broken up, as you can see there, for a mentor coordinator. Um, for curriculum development um, and the actual implementation of mentors, for travel, um, and then for benefits um, that are encumbered with those other positions. The two goals are to create a mentor program that pairs Native American males with role models from the Seneca Nation of Indians, and to create a cohesive aligned pre-K-12 program um, that is aimed at promoting and strengthening cultural awareness and education. So, those are the um, grants that we currently are awarded. Um, many times people think of grants as um, a competitive grant, meaning, you know, we have to go through a process and then someone somewhere says, oh, you get this much or you don't get this or, 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 or you won. Um, the grants that we presented to you this evening are really sort of dollars that are distributed by um, New York State or the federal um, Department of Education for the purpose um, that they uh, we indicated. So it's not as if we have to compete for these funds, um, but these funds are utilized to specifically target um, some initiative that the state or federal government um, is looking to put forward. So with that, um, we'll open it up for Mrs. Dudek or I, if anyone has any questions. All right. Thank you. You guys did a great job. Thank you. Um, next, we have our budget presentation. Take it away, Karen. All right. Let's see if I can make this work. Okay. Let's see. All right. So, can you see my screen? Not yet. No. Fourteen years ago, what the heck, here? Great. We had you all set up before, Karen. I know. I don't know what the heck happened. And then we were interrupted. And now it's not working. On my end, it looks like I'm sharing my screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, Karen, could I offer a suggestion um, sure. just to give a shot? So in the PowerPoint presentation along the top menus, you'll see slideshow. Yeah. Um, you'll have an option perhaps two thirds of the way to the right that says monitor. Can I suggest you just pick one of those monitors, maybe monitor two? And what that will do is lock the presentation to that. Um, and perhaps see then if you can share your screen and select that monitor and um, maybe that'll make magic happen. How about that? Can you see it now? Beautiful. Oh, there we go. Look at All that. Right. Good work. Look at that. Mark helped me. Yay. <laughs> Imagine that. All right. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, this is the, the first time that you'll see me um, over the next couple months. It'll be several times as we work our way through uh, the 21-22 budget system or process. Um, and here's exactly when hopefully you, you will see me. Um, tonight we're doing obviously uh, presentation one dealing with admin facilities and transportation. Then in March, I'll do instructional. 16th, we'll do um, another kind of an overall status of where we are at that point in time and adopt the tax rate 
And then in April, we'll go over uh, the last piece of the presentations and then also final review. Then we do the big public hearing on May 4th and then budget presence or uh, budget vote actually on the 18th. So um, to start off, I guess, staffing right now, uh, we don't have any retirements. Uh, we have not received any notices of retirements. There's potential for three of them that we've heard through the great line, potentially two teachers and one teacher assistant. But in reviewing all the budget submissions, um, the proposals to add the following positions. So we're looking at five homeschool coordinators to provide equitable services to non-native students, four teacher assistants to provide additional supports for students struggling uh, with the virtual learning, and then monitors and bus drivers to accommodate a single bus run with a common start time for all the buildings. If we move in that direction, we would need at least four bus drivers and uh, additional monitors as well. We're looking at potentially adding two virtual teachers to assist with our e-learning functionalities, adding one groundskeeper for Vets Park, and last but not least, uh, coaches and interventionists to assist students as need be. And so our lovely tax cap calculation. Now remember, New York State calls this the 2% tax cap for us. Yeah, that 2% tax cap means this, this formula shows you based on you know, our, our tax levy from last year times the tax base growth factor plus the pilots minus the prior year's exemptions times the allowable growth factor and then add in the uh, subtract out last year's pilots and then add in this uh, current exemption of our tax, uh, tax capital tax exemptions. So that way down here at the bottom, it looks like we can add, or not add, but we could levy $797,779.30 for our taxes, which is over half a million dollars increase or our 2% tax cap is really 219.11%. Are we gonna do that? Absolutely not. We are proposing once again to go out with a $250,000 tax cap. So what don't we know? Sometimes it's easier to say what we don't know than what we do know. Um, the biggest piece is state aid. Uh, Governor Cuomo has submitted his uh, budget to the legislative uh, body to review, et cetera. According to him, we will see an increase. However, that increase comes at the tail of $1.6 million coming from the Federal CARES Act. The unknown of that is if there are any stipulations to that money, such as supplement, not supplant, or vice versa, and um, any other ties to that, if there's specific funding uh, requirements for it, if we have to spend it on specific items or not. We don't know anything yet other than they're working on an application. Uh, receipt of Native American contract funds, it could lead to a cash flow issue because uh, they're behind uh, actually 1819, 1920, and then 2021 as well. So we're still waiting on payments for those uh, years. And uh, last but not least is COVID. We have no idea how much longer we're going to have to deal with this virus and everything that it entails. We've already spent more than $100,000 on PPE. And that includes, you know, partitions and gloves and masks and hand sanitizer and thermometers and all kinds of stuff to keep our students and staff safe. And, you know, that just continues as this whole pandemic continues. So we don't know how much that's going to um, continue to rise in those expenses. So taking our first look tonight is district administration, facilities and transportation. And um, I wanna stress that this is literally the first look. So what I've done is I've inputted all of the uh, proposals received uh, from everyone. And this is the first look at it. We've not vetted it for any increases, decreases, or you know, anything that maybe, you know, maybe somebody requested the Taj Mahal, I don't know. All I know is these are the numbers that we're looking at right now. So Board of Ed increased by uh, just 1%, that's just a little bit in sale, or um, 
materials and supplies. Uh, district clerk and meetings are up due to additional funding for BOCES because we increased the uh, board docs and some materials and supplies. The superintendent's office is up due to the inclusion of the position that was hired this year, the chief, chief equity officer, as well as the um, potential for a diversity summit. The business office is up due to the inclusion of a new position that we added this year. Uh, of the junior accountant, as well as I'm looking for a scanner and heavy duty shredder, shredder for the district. Uh, audit is up just as anticipated. We need to go back to out to an RFP for audit services this year. Tax collection is up due to increased costs of build printing. Legal is down and I need to reassess this um, at this time to make sure that that's um, enough in there i'm looking at it again and i'm thinking that it's not so that i need to to do some additional review on uh personnel is pretty close that's just a little bit of increase in um, materials and supplies as well as contractual public relations is down as an employee left and right now i believe that one is not being replaced central print and data very little change basically just an increase in uh, paper supplies etc Undistributed are things like the nation lease costs, the uh, insurance costs, and all those kind of things um, that the district has to, to pay to run. And that's just a little bit of an increase. So overall, it's a 6% increase for total district administration. Next up is facilities. And don't freak out, that is not a mistake on the second line. Salaries is up a little bit due to a requested position for Vets Park. Equipment is way up due to a request for a new pool air heating unit. And this might potentially get moved to a capital project instead of funding it out of the budget. Uh, they're also looking to replace a truck that is from 2005 um, under vehicles. Uh, contractual is up due to the inclusion of costs for additional repair and maintenance etc. for the increase in facilities that we have now with the STEAM edition, Seneca um, edition, and uh, that's Park. BOCES is up a little bit due to uh, BOCES costs increasing, and then materials and supplies increases quite a bit because that includes um, utilities for buildings across uh, district-wide as well as for that's Park. And last but not least, is transportation. Salaries are increasing. Again, as I noted earlier, there's an increase in the number of drivers and monitors. Equipment is down because we were able to purchase some radios this year that we don't need to purchase next year. Buses, uh, vehicles is buses and vans. We're looking at purchasing an additional five buses and four vans. And the rest of them are kind of even other than utilities. And again, I need to take another look at that to make sure that we have everything included. I know it is up because we now have Wi-Fi on every single bus that we have. We used to only have it on five or six buses, but now it's on every single one. So that cost is um, you know, included there for the entire year for all, I think there's 27 buses off the top of my head. And then contracted transportation is an increase. Uh, that's transportation to uh, St. Mary's School for the Deaf for two of our students. And that, um, again, is just a uh, first look at this thing with um, all the budgets coming in and being consolidated into one and, and uh, first, first briefing at the numbers. So are there any questions at this point? I don't hear any, Karen. All right. I'll see you next time. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Levi, right. you're probably going to have to stop sharing because I can't. Thank you. I got gotcha. you. Thanks. We'll move on to communications. Is anyone here for uh, Title VI? Um, I do see Nancy Williams is on, but I don't think anybody else is here. Nancy, do you have anything to add for Title VI? All right then. 
Let's move on to uh, central office message. Dr. Beeler, do you wanna start with you? Sure. Um, well, as I mentioned um, previously, it was great to see our students and our staff back on campus. Um, we have been uh, just reminding in a friendly manner to follow the rules that we have put in place. Uh, and uh, in all honesty, our staff and students um, and teachers have been terrific with following the recommendations um, and the guidelines that are uh, expected for um, all of the members uh, of our school community. Um, I'd also like to mention that um, about two weeks ago, uh, the school district and um, the Salamanca Teachers Admi uh, Association uh, opened up formal contract negotiations for a successor agreement. Their um, current contract um, is effective through the end of June of this year. Today, we um, exchanged proposals, and um, I'm very optimistic, as I believe the president um, of STA is, that um, we will come to a um, fair, uh, equitable, um, and very positive resolution with regard to a successor agreement in the very near future. Um, I just wanted to extend my gratitude um, to the STA leadership for the professional manner that they have taken in putting a proposal together. Um, and our meetings have been very friendly, cordial, and um, I look forward to moving forward and um, coming to a good conclusion with regard to a positive contract for the teachers. Thank you. Okay. Karen, do you have anything else to add? Who gets to tell Karen she's on mute? <laughs> we can circle back if um, that's fine. Um, there we go. Okay, I had to reboot. I can't hear you now. She must be having problems. All right, let's go on to uh, our Board of Education message. Dale, do you want to start off? I'm actually good tonight, Teresa, um, even though my, my lag time is more laggy than most because of the snow. Um, <laughs> I'd just like to, you know, say thanks to everybody um, for being, being on the board, uh, board Zoom tonight and stay warm and stay healthy. All right, thanks, Dale. Barb? Um, it's just nice to see everybody so happy about being back at school. I am enjoying all the communication on Facebook and stay well. Thanks, Barb. Sue? Well, I'm really pleased that everything went well um, with the opening of school and with the students and hope it continues and that we have no problems with the COVID. <laughs> Me too. Brad? Uh, I also wanted to say great job for all the staff and faculty for keeping the kids safe and getting them back to school. Carrie? Hey, evening. Um, yeah, same thing. I just want to echo the same thing. Um, welcome back, everybody. Um, let's you know push hard to get to the the end result here this year. Um, I know a lot of kids are struggling right now, but we want to do everything we can to get them the supports they need, and hopefully, we'll get some improvement. Uh, other than that, I'm good tonight. Awesome, Meg. I know you got your hands full. Yeah. <laughs> I'm solo parenting right now, so I'm going to keep it short because I've got someone here who's very vocal and would like to weigh in too. Um, but just you know, same thing. I'm I'm glad that we're we're open again. Just everyone stay vigilant, um, you know, because this is highly highly contagious. Um, the new strains are, um, and also for the parents and the students who may be watching this who feel like they've fallen too far far behind, I just want to emphasize it's not too late to reconnect with your teachers. It's not too late to hand in assignments. 
anything you can do right now will help next year. Um, so it's, we're in the same predicament. I know I've said this, you know, multiple meetings, but we are in the same predicament as students and parents and grownups in all other districts. I was watching, you know, CBS Evening News a couple nights ago, and they were interviewing parents in very affluent districts. So they have lots of resources for tutors and everything else and those parents were so concerned about their students falling behind so um you know we're not alone in this but just you know connect with the district if you've been you know out of touch for a while if you've been out of touch with your teachers please make those connections because we're here to help you thanks meg that's always great to say uh to remind people that it's not too late um I wanted to welcome back all the students and staff too. I'm really excited that everybody is back. Uh, and a reminder to all the kids that are playing sports, uh, you know, please make sure you're staying safe because we don't want to ruin this for all the other kids that want to participate. So make sure you're wearing your mask, you're keeping your distance when possible, you're following all the rules uh, because you're not just affecting you, you're affecting all of your teammates coaches and all the other uh, staff that are in the buildings. And uh, I'm excited everyone's back and I, I hope everyone stays safe. And again, remember to wear your mask and keep your circle small. So that's what I have. So I will turn it over to Bob. Thank you and welcome everyone. Um, I was going to start by saying we had 40 individuals on uh, Zoom and uh, 45 on Facebook Live, minus the two individuals who got booted off. Thank you to Levi for promptly attending to our Facebook security. Before I jump in, I know that Karen um, had something to add, and she's having some technical difficulties getting back on. But Dr. Beeler, can you just give a very brief kind of introduction for the item on the agenda with Brigade? Oh, absolutely. This um, is super cool. So this is exciting. And um, I do need to pass on a tremendous amount of credit to um, Mrs. Beatty, uh, who uh, came across Brigade, um, apparently during a binge watching of uh, the Rachel Ray show. So um, to go back, uh, this came, I believe, to um, Mrs. Beatty's attention when a Brigade chef was featured on the Rachel Ray show. And Brigade is an organization um, that was initiated by a chef who left his pretty prestigious career to help public schools serve better. And when I say better, I mean higher quality um, food to students that is better tasting and provided um, a larger repertoire of offerings to students. Um, so that was presented uh, by Mrs. Beatty to um, Karen, Mrs. McGarrett, and myself. Um, and she asked if we could take a look at it at the, at the district moving forward. Uh, and after we did, it became pretty clear that it will pull in several initiatives, not only our desire to provide higher quality food um, and better tasting food, but also to be able to incorporate indigenous foods, which is something that we have had a request from our Title VI parents um, and really just makes sense. So uh, a little bit later on, you're going to see a contract um, that will allow us to engage um, in a partnership with Brigade to uh, initiate a training um, for uh, our, uh, well, moving forward to um, have a chef that will um, be more experienced the, and have a greater opportunity to engage in a different um, style of cooking than we currently have. So um, we're very optimistic that this will be beneficial not only for our students, but for our staff. Um, and perhaps even be able to open it up community-wide. Thanks, Mark. Um, so with a few items that I have tonight, um, I have to start out, unfortunately, with um, some more formal information with regard to our capital referendum that the board approved a uh, meeting or so ago. Uh, on March 16th, uh, from noon uh, until 9 p.m. in the high school gym, the district will hold a public referendum for the purpose of property acquisitions for multiple properties that touch our main campus at 50 Iroquois Drive. The property purchases include land on 90 Fern Avenue, 
650 Front Avenue and a vacant parcel of land also on Front Avenue that is right next to the bus garage. The need for these acquisitions will allow the district greater flexibility for the site development for work associated with phase 3.3 and 3.4 of the previous uh, approved capital project for 34 million in uh, change. Um, the purchases uh, require public vote and public approval of a simple majority and the parcels um, respectively for Fern Avenue, $75,000, 899 for 650 Front Avenue and $35,000 for the vacant parcel of land plus respective attorneys closing costs and uh, lease fees associated with those properties. With regard to the vote, uh, it is March 16th. Uh, later in this agenda, we will be appointing uh, some workers to provide uh, district registration for voters, as well as um, some uh, workers for the March 16th referendum. That aside, uh, I do want to address uh, a little bit in greater detail uh, a few of the public comments that came uh, to my desk over the past week or 10 days. Uh, both started with conversations about the uh, implementation and relaxing of regulations for the start of high risk uh, winter sports, uh, particularly basketball and bowling. Um, both of these individuals are longstanding community members. They have either had children in the district or have children currently in the district. And they were questioning the logic of New York State to allow high risk sports first before kids could return. And uh, quite frankly, with both of those individuals, uh, I agree uh, wholeheartedly. Um, I would have liked to have seen the state say, let's get more kids in school and take those uh, stringent requirements from social distancing uh, and give us a little bit more flexibility in our classrooms uh, and allow us the ability to do what we've done with children since last March to keep them safe and to keep our staff safe. And while I agree with those community members, frankly, it's not my call and it's not our call. We are sometimes subjected to the directives from the governor, from the State Department of Health and the County Department of Health. And in this case with athletics, they came down with a pretty rigorous set of standards and said, if you do all of these things and have approval from the county, then we'll allow you in limited instances to have some um, risk, high risk sports, basketball and bowling. Um, wrestling and cheerleading are still pushed forward and we're op optimistic that those will occur. And we fully expect the outdoor spring sports and even a few of the lingering fall sports um, to come into play beginning in March, April, and May. Um, I think the other point too, in talking with the community members over the last week or so, um, we have noticed um, in what we can affirm because the data is clear, our students are strongly committed to following the rules. They are rule followers by their very nature. And I'm confident, and I think uh, the first two days of the uh, sports practices and the coaches meetings and the athlete meetings and the parent meetings gives me great confidence in saying that our students, our parents and our athletes are going to take this responsibility very seriously and shine as we would expect them to do. Um, today, the New York State uh, New York State offered some uh, guidance on relaxing some of the transportation standards and allowing more students on buses for transportation. We are taking a look at that. That was something that just really dropped today. Uh, and there is some language that does conflict from the Public High School Athletic Association guidance with transportation and that which came down today. So we're going to dive into that. Um, that's not uh, terribly impactful for us. Uh, we've got a pretty good handle on transportation, but we will take a look at that and see um, if that does have any changes and then obviously let parents know. Um, I also like Dr. Beeler, I do wanna thank uh, the Teachers Association when the athletics information dropped and then subsequent additional information dropped like no spectators 
and officials associations dictating what they will and will not do. We've been fortunate uh, in our region that the officials have been very cooperative and helpful. So we're blessed with that. But I do want to give a shout out to um, uh, the STA Association, particularly Lacey Pilblad as president and Tony Bocharski as vice president, but also the coaches, Varsity, JV, and Modified, Chad Bartosik uh, and Rich uh, Morton as our athletic directors. Uh, on the agenda tonight is an MOA that clarifies um, how we will compensate our coaches on a shortened, reduced schedule. And this does also um, clarify the issue for the remaining sports seasons that will happen in the 2021 school year. So whether it's fall two starting in March or uh, spring sports or uh, winter high risk sports part two, um, we've got a good agreement that um, uh, we can be happy with. And we had a great series of accelerated conversations from Friday over the weekend and quite a few times today. So I do wanna give a shout out to those individuals I want to thank our staff uh, that are being appointed tonight. Um, Mrs. Beaver, I did send you a quick chat that our reading teacher is on the call to be introduced, as well as a few of our mentors. And with that, um, I'll turn it back over to Mrs. Ray. Thanks, Bob. Uh, Teresa, I'm sorry, one last thing. I missed it on my notes. Um, we did participate uh, and provide a letter of support to the Seneca Nation. Uh, for a Native American Career Technical Education Program grant. That is something that the nation is pursuing and uh, we were able to provide uh, the support and assistance. So I believe the nation could meet the Sunday deadline for filing. I wasn't uh, informed otherwise. So I think that that did go through. Uh, so that is something that I'm sure at a later date we'll be talking about. Okay, thanks. And Bob. that's it, I promise. Thanks. Hey, it is Carrie. Um, yeah, that did go through. Uh, they did submit in time. Insider information, huh, Carrie? <laughs> okay, let's move on to our consent agenda. We need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion. Oh, second, Meg. Okay, we got a motion by Barb, second by Meg. Thumbs up, everybody. Okay with me, Sue. I'm good, Carrie. Okay, I see Meg thumbs up, I'm thumbs up, Barb's thumbs up, Carrie and Sue said yes, Dale thumbs up, Brad thumbs up. So that's seven yes. Correct. No uh, opposed, motion carried. And then we'll have no old business, so we'll move on to the new business. Uh, our cat Little Valley soccer merge. Uh, so we need a motion to approve the soccer merge. Motion, Carrie. Second, Brad. Motion by Carrie, second by Brad. Um, can we thumbs up? Good with Sue. Sue said yes. Carrie says yes. Carrie says yes. Brad. Uh, Barb, Dale, and Meg are all thumbs up. I'm a thumbs up. So seven yes, zero opposed, motion carried. And our item B is our special meeting and vote announcement. Uh, <clears throat> so the, the election chairperson would be myself. Any board member uh, would be an alternate, uh, first Meg and then the rest of the board members. And then it approves the inspection, uh, inspector of elections, and then the chief uh, election inspector and their rates. So we need a motion to approve. I have a question. Oh. Uh, let's, let's make the motion first and then. Um, I'll motion, Meg. Okay. Second, Barb. So we got a motion by Meg, a second by Barb. Okay, Sue, go ahead with your question. Well, as a former election commissioner, I really hope that we, our workers are all certified, workers for the Edu Board of Education. Bob? Janet, you wanna comment on that with the workers? Yes, these are, these are people that have worked in the past. They've all been qualified in the past. Um, I don't honestly know if they're all certified right now, but they've been doing it for years. 
I would check on that. Sue, so I do have a list. I do have a list of certified uh, people, but uh, like I said, we just hired the same people that we have been in the past, with the exception of two substitute uh, workers that are the first time around. We can follow up on that. Except yeah. I'd like to make sure they're all certified. Janet, can you follow up and make sure they're all certified, please? Yeah, and if not, I can request the um, Board of Elections to make sure they're all certified. I could do that. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Janet. Okay, then <clears throat> we have a motion by Meg, second by, uh, was it Brad or Barb? Bar it was Barb. Okay, Barb. Mm -hmm. So motion by Meg, second by Barb. All in favor? Sue says okay. Sue says okay. Gary says yes. <laughs> Gary says yes. Uh, Barb is a thumbs up. Dale's a thumbs up. Brad's a thumbs up. I'm a thumbs up. Meg's a thumbs up. Five, seven yes, zero opposed. Yeah. Motion carried. <clears throat> and item C is our annual election, which will be Tuesday, May 19th, uh, 2021 from noon to nine. So we need a motion to approve uh, the voter registration day and petition announcements. No motion. motion. Is there a motion by Brad? Sue Second. was in there too. Second by Sue. Are there any questions? Okay. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. I was trying to hit the mute button. Um, just a follow-up question for both of these two topics, I guess. Um, what are we doing about the voting? Is it in person? Is it ballots? What are we doing with everything? At this point in time, it's in person. Okay. There is absentee for military. Thanks, Sue. And we use permanent absentee ballots too. The people that have uh, registered at the county for a permanent absentee, we send them absentee application ballots. Okay. Okay. And then this this applies to the March vote and the May vote? Yes. Okay. Also, if you're a native, you do not have to be registered? Correct. We'll use the clerk rolls right. and have a separate table for uh, enrolled Senecas like we have in the past. Yes. And we have the option too for people native, non-native to register with the district. Right, yes, correct. Any other questions? Okay, we have a motion by Brad, second by Sue. All in favor? Gary says yes. Gary says yes, Sue says yes. And then we have five thumbs up, so seven yes, zero opposed, motion carried. Then we have a donation to Prospect, uh, 449 books donated by Ohana 100, the Daniel K. Akaka Family Foundation. So we need a motion to approve the donation. Motion, Barb. Second, Meg. Motion by Barb, second by Meg. Are there any questions? There's also some backpacks from um, Five Star Bank and yep. other supplies too. I'm sorry, I missed that. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, it, I was just gonna clarify that too. It's books and backpacks and supplies. Correct. And they were really nice. So I, I know the community really appreciated that um, for prospect kids. Five Star has done that for quite a few years as I recall. Uh, they're very generous in the community. Yes, they are. That's awesome. So we have a motion by Barb, second by Meg to accept the donations. All in favor? Do yes. Do the yes. Gary says yes. Do the yes. I'm a yes. And then Brad, Barb, Meg, and Dale mm -hmm. are all thumbs up. So seven yes, zero opposed, motion carried. And then item E is our BOSI 2021. 2022 unit cost methodology. So we need a motion to approve that. Motion, Meg. 
Second, Carrie. Motion, Meg, second, Carrie. Are there any questions? I would just note that BOCES, um, we had a meeting last week regarding the budget. Um, and once again, BOCES has been very responsive to our com component districts and keeping costs down. Okay. So we have a motion by Meg, second by Carrie. All in favor or thumbs up? Carrie says yes. Carrie says yes. Teresa says yes. Barb, Dale, Meg, and Brad are all thumbs up. Seven yes, zero opposed, motion carried. And my favorite, change orders. So we have two change orders, one for Toss Sports, the other for Lakeshore Paving. So we need a motion to approve those change orders. I'll motion your favorite. Second. <laughs> We're getting smaller. <laughs> I know. Who seconded that, Dale? Brad. Brad, okay. Motion by Carrie, second by Brad. Uh, are there any questions on the change orders? Thumbs up or a yes? Yes for Sue. Yes for yes Sue. for Carrie. Yes for Carrie. Yes for Teresa. And then Meg, Brad, Dale, and Barbara all thumbs up. So seven yes, zero opposed. Motion carried. And item G is surplus, eight hundred and eighty-three iPads. So we need a motion to declare those items surplus. Motion, Meg. Second. Second. Motion by Meg and second by Sue, but there were a couple close runners up. So uh, do we have any questions? Yeah. Um, what are we doing with all these? That's a good question. Um, and I am going to, I believe Mrs. Brown is on. If she can unmute herself, I believe these are some early versions uh, of iPads. If Marcy can unmute and just clarify the status of those. Yeah, we do have quite a few that are very early versions of them. Apparently, we've been hiding them in a cupboard for quite a long time, hoping to do something with them. Um, <clears throat> so the ones that we can actually sell, um, we are going to, and Karen and I have talked about it. And if we can say we can get a price tag on, uh, you know, the ones that are in better shape, we can offer them to the community for sale um, once we get that process up and going. But I, I want to stress that anything that's offered to the community will be offered essentially just a blank iPad. There's nothing going to be on it. There's no support for it. No, nothing like that. Just an iPad. But we do have some that are, are relatively newer, but they're still not supported by Apple, if that makes any sense. Is there any market in... This is just an ignorant question on my part, but recycling for them? I mean, I know that they have valuable metals and everything inside. Um, I don't know if anyone does that. Yeah, I've got a couple of companies that we're going to get into contact with. It'll be my project tomorrow and um, Thursday to get into contact with those companies and find out what we can do with them. Um, there are some that I would like to send down to our steam wing for our students to be able to take apart and see what they can do with the inner makings of them. If they can build something out of them, chain a whole bunch together, whatever, just to kind of have fun with and experiment with. But yeah, we're going to look into recycling as well. That's good. Cause I just, I always want to keep things out of landfills. So, you know, even if someone takes one and it's not usable, I, I want to prevent it being tossed. Once we have that process ironed out, we'll report back. Thank you. All right. Are there any other questions? I got a question unrelated. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, as we're talking about surplus, I'm going back to them books that were surplus, uh, I don't even know, a year or more ago. Um, I'm just curious whatever happened to those. Um, we disposed of some of them. We did inquire with the nation if they wanted any and left uh, the all call out if anybody wanted them. There weren't many takers for them. The, some did get dispersed to kids and others came and would, would take a few here and there, but given the volume of them and their age, there wasn't a real good market for them. 
Well, I was specifically talking about that list from, again, well over a year ago. There were some pretty interesting titles on there that I wanted to browse through if nothing else was going to be done with them. I, I, we, may have we may still have some of them, but I, um, I apologize. I'm not sure if that where those are because we haven't touched them in a while with COVID. Um, but let me get into it with the uh, library staff. Um, I know there was a pile of really old textbooks in the weight room um, that was disposed of. Um, but let me get into that. I'm, I apologize. I'm not sure where they went with COVID and what their full status was. Okay. Yeah. Th these were the textbooks. It was actually library books. Um, I think nonfiction or fiction. I'm not even sure. I don't remember, but I think there's a pile still in the library that may be a little bit better versions of some books, but once, when I get in the office tomorrow, I'll take a look back there and see what's there. Hey, Bob, this is Rich. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Those books are in the boxes covered in the garage down in the Fern House. Okay. Okay. Does that help, Carrie? Sure. Um, I don't know <laughs> if that's the exact books we were talking about, but yeah. Yeah, it was all those ones that were in the from the library. Okay. I mean, I can take a trip down there tomorrow and get some pictures of them and kind of see if I can find the old list and then post them or get back in contact with you to see anybody would be interested in them. All right. I'll, I'll browse through board docs and I'll find that specific list that I was talking about. I know it was over a year ago, but I'll, I'll dig it up and I'll email it to you. Yeah. Um, so, sorry for going down the rabbit hole guys. No, that's okay. When the next food delivery comes, you get a box of food and you get a couple books. The next food, the next food delivery is tomorrow morning. Okay. One box. Uh, Have them come down fern, stop in the driveway. Wait a minute. Don't, don't give them away till I can browse through them. <laughs> okay, we got a motion by Mag, second by Sue. All in favor? Thumbs up by Brad, Mag, Barb, and Dale. Carrie's good. Carrie's a yes. Teresa's a yes. Sue? Yes. Sue is a yes. Seven yes. Zero opposed. Motion carried. And then next is our brigade contract that we're excited about. So we need a motion to approve that $60,000 contract. Motion, Carrie. Second, Meg. Motion by Carrie, second by Meg. Are there any other questions? Then we I'm need... just really excited about this. So you know, kudos to everyone who's worked on this. Um, and kudos to watching Rachel Ray. <laughs> this is just such a good opportunity for our district. It's exciting. All right, we have a motion by Carrie, second by Mag. All in favor? Oh, yes. Brad, Mag, Barb, and Dale are thumbs up. Susie, Carrie, yes. Carrie's a yes. Teresa's a yes. Seven yes. Zero opposed. Motion carried. Item I is our Young and Right Agreement for 68487 uh, to develop the uh, Building Condition Survey and Facilities Inspection Technology report. Uh, so we need a motion to approve that agreement. Motion, Barb. Second, Brad. Motion by Barb, second by Brad. Are there any questions? Then all in favor? Who yes. Carrie, yes. Who's a yes, Carrie's a yes. Brad, uh, Mag, Barb, and Dale are all thumbs up. Seven yes, zero opposed, motion carried. And item J is to create a position for one full-time Native American instructional coach. So we need a motion to approve this position. So move. Second, Meg. Motion Thank by you. Sue, second by Mag. Are there any I questions? That went to Dale, Teresa. Oh, it went to Dale? Yeah, I, I, got a, I got a lot for the lag time here. Yeah, the five second, okay, so. <laughs> uh -huh. Do we have any questions? Thanks, Matthew. Just a comment. We got to get Dale better internet still. I know. <laughs> Motion Mark, by Dale. Anybody who has any connections with the cable company. What's that, Dale? Yeah. 
<laughs> if anybody has any connections with the cable company, have them, have them run a line up Bucktooth, will you? <laughs> oh, man. The governor. <laughs> so we got a motion by Sue, second by Dale. All in favor? <laughs> Brad, Mag, Barb, and Dale are thumbs up. Carrie? Carrie yes. Sue? Sue. Susie yeah. yes. Teresa is a yes. Seven yes. Zero opposed. Motion carried. Item K is our STA MOA for the uh, sports coaching positions for 2021 school year, effective through June 30. It says 31st, but I'm going to say that's a typo. June 30, yes. Carry we'll amend. June 30. Uh, 2021. So we need a motion to approve that MOA. So move. Motion by Sue. Second, Barb. Second by Barb. Are there any questions? I'll fix that typo. Thank you. Thanks, Dana. 30 days, half September. Little poem work that time. So. <laughs> Motion by Sue, second by uh, Barb. All in favor? Carrie's a yes. Carrie's a yes. Sue's a yes. Teresa's a yes. And thumbs up by Meg, Brad, Dale, and Barb. Seven yes, zero opposed. Motion carried. Uh, item eight is our personnel consent agenda. So we need a motion to approve the personnel consent agenda. Motion, Brad. Motion. Second, Carrie. Motion by Brad, second by Carrie. Are there any questions? All in favor? Oh, yeah. Sue's a yes. Carrie's a yes. Teresa's a yes. And Brad, Mag, Barb, and Dale are all thumbs up. Seven yes. Zero opposed. Motion carried. And now we have some introductions. We have uh, three of our individuals that are with us tonight. Uh, I'll start and then I'll turn it over to Seneca Principal, Mrs. Beaver. Um, I do wanna thank uh, Penny Beatty and Lynn McGuera for stepping up to serve as administrative mentors for some of our newer administrators. Uh, we appreciate their uh, experience uh, in the district, but also their experience in, in education. And um, I appreciate as always, our veterans stepping up to help some of our newer Salamanca staff. So thank you to Penny and to Lynn for serving in that capacity. And then I'll lateral it to Mrs. Beaver. Good evening. Um, I would just like to recognize Alicia Ralph as a new member of our district. Alicia has been in education for eight years. And she's certified literacy in birth through 12. We're excited to add her to our team of reading specialists at Seneca. Her diverse background, her knowledge of literacy, and strong work ethic are exactly what we need as we move forward. So welcome to our team, Alicia. Thank you. And that is it, I believe, for who is present for appointment this evening. OK. Thank you, Alicia, for attending. And welcome to the Weir family. Welcome. All right, we'll move on to item nine, which is our board information and reports. We have our Indigenous Education Committee meeting minutes, um, our CA BOCES nominations for 2021, then our upcoming events. So uh, the ninth is our um, Board of Education Finance Committee meeting. The 10th is Indigenous Education Committee meeting. And the 11th is our board retreat. And does anybody else have anything to add? Um, there's a, a very quick single item personnel committee agenda on Thursday. Uh, there's just one item on there. And with regard to the potential retreat, I don't have any topics scheduled. We have a few lingering ones from the past retreats. Um, and I'll talk. Um, uh, with Teresa and uh, the rest of the members of the board, if there are specific things you're, you'd like, but perhaps maybe the 11th will be a um, kind of a clearinghouse conversation um, type of retreat. That's what seems to be shaking out. Best of us? Kind of. Okay. 
And Can just you know, this is probably out of Robert's rules of order, but there's a couple comments on Facebook Live of people who are interested in surplus books. So I know Levi earlier had said that he would take some pictures and post some things. I think there is the community interest there. Okay. Thanks, Meg. Meg. And that's okay. it. Then with that, we need a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Motion by Carrie, second by Sue. All in favor? Aye. Susie, yes. Carrie, yes. Amy, yes. And Brad, Mag, Barb, and uh, Dale are all thumbs up. Seven yes, zero opposed. Motion carried. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Stay safe and warm. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Teresa, before you sign off, I just need a quick phone call with you about an unrelated issue. Oh, boy.